Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking and subscribing the channel is free and easy, and it helps me out a lot. If you want to go a little farther with your support, I have Patreon and YouTube membership available, which includes access to the Boston Roll Discord server, early access to things I'm working on, sideboard plans, cards I'm buying, you could have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use the YouTube membership option, you get sweet, unique YouTube badges and emotes for the channel. If you want to play what I'm playing, you can use the code Boston Roll to support my channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com. And if you're playing on Magic Online, a CardHoarder.com loan account can let you play any deck anytime. If you want to wear your support, there is Boston Roll merch available. All of these links are in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I am playing Legacy, and at the request of Patreon subscriber Arkratos, this is Elves. Elves are an extremely hot commodity in Legacy right now. This deck has been around basically since the printing of Heritage Druid in one form or another. It has a long history of convoluted wind conditions involving mirror entity or predator dragon or whatever the hell. But the printing of Crater Hoof Behemoth in Avacyn Restored gave Natural Order a clean kill for elves. And then also in Avacyn Restored was Terminus, which was a bad thing for elves for a long time. And elves just continues to crank through. Sensei's Divining Top got banned, so don't worry about Terminus anymore. Allosaurus Shepherd got printed, don't worry about Chalice of the Void anymore. And this deck just keeps getting better. It keeps getting more tools. They keep printing green creatures, which Elves is a Green Sun Zenith deck. So green creatures are naturally going to be on the table. Even just a spicy one of, like Collector Oof from 2019. Endurance from 2021. Like these cards just find their way in in little numbers because you can find them when you want them. And right now, Legacy, many would say it's in an unhealthy spot with Ragavan, Expressive Iteration, and the dominance of Is It Delver, Murktide Region, all of those things. Elves is in a unique position because every single card in this deck blocks Ragavan. Like, there's not a lot of decks that could just put 1-1s one in front of Ragavan forever, but this is one of them. They're also in the position where you don't necessarily care about Ragavan. Like, in any blue mirror, if Ragavan hits you and takes your ponder, that's just, like, an insane amount of value off of a thing that they wanted to do anyway, which is attack. But, like, what's the worst-case scenario? Like, if Ragavan takes your best card, what's, what's Delver going to do with a Green Sun Zenith? What are they going to do with a Natural Order? Maybe they'll get, like, Grist or Endurance that have, like, a reasonable three-drop in play. But they're not going to just go off with, like, Ponder into Cascading Advantage for the rest of the game. So this deck can ignore Ragavan. It can block Ragavan. It can also race Murktide region, which is something that a lot of decks can't do. If at any point the Delver deck puts its shields down or doesn't manage the board enough, surprise, Natural Order, Hoof, you're dead. And a lot of the time it'll be uncounterable because of Allosaur Shepherd. Meanwhile, Allosaur Shepherd, even without Natural Order, six mana, all your elves are five fives now. Surprise. Like, that's bigger than anything they're presenting. Elves is just asking a lot of questions of the top deck of the format. It's an interactive deck. It's a fast deck. It can win on turn two or three. I don't think this version can win on turn two. There's no Nettle Sentinels in this version. This is the Hello Newton version. I probably should have credited the deck more than three minutes into my explanation of it. But Hello Newton is the mastermind behind this deck. He figured out that Elvish Reclaimer is just a one-mana Tarmogoyf that is also counts as an elf when that matters, and also tutors up Gaia's Cradle, which is one of the most important cards in the deck. It's the way that you get a zillion mana and combo off. It's the way you hardcast your hoof or a zenith for hoof or activate Shepherd. This is just an insane card on its face, and the implications in this specific deck are also insane. Hello, Newton. This is his build of the deck, but at the, the gain of Elvish Reclaimer, you lose Nettle Sentinel. Nettle Sentinel is the traditional elves combo with Heritage Druid. Heritage Druid is tap three elves to get green, 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 and Nettle Sentinel is whenever you tap cast a green spell, untap this. So with Glimpse of Nature, it's very easy to rip through your whole deck with Heritage Druid and a couple Nettle Sentinels. This deck doesn't quite do that. It has to work a little harder. You can draw your deck 
and cast all your spells. However, it involves like heritage druiding into a cradle and then cradling midway through the chain already. It, it takes a little more setup to go completely ham, but it doesn't need to go completely ham because it's more stable in the meantime with Elvish Reclaimer being a 3-4, getting its more access to Guy's Cradle, Allosaur Shepherd just functioning as GG if you let, it, let the Elves player on tap with it. There's a lot going on here. And I think this deck is really good. Newton himself top-aided the first Eternal Weekend event this year. One of Newton's disciples won the second Eternal Weekend event this year with Newton's list, defeating Elves in the quarter or the semifinals, and that Elves player beat Elves in the semi or the the quarterfinals as well. So there were at least three Elves decks in that top eight. This deck is very powerful and it's very well positioned, and I think it's very good. I played it at the Buffalo Chicken Dip Legacy event this past weekend. And that event, by the way, is exactly what it sounds like. You get to play Legacy and eat Buffalo Chicken Dip. It's amazing. Check that out if you live anywhere near Columbus, Ohio. But I played this deck. I ran pretty bad. Uh, I actually 0-3'd the tournament and then hung out eating Buffalo Chicken Dip and supporting my friends all day. But while I was 0 3 the tournament, Aaron Relentless was online winning the, the Bayou Eternal Weekend event. That was... They were happening at the exact same time. So uh, I could point to some spots where I didn't play perfectly or caught the cold hand of variance. And I hope we do better than that today because this deck is really good. I'm also blessed with the Holy Bible, which is Newton's sideboard guide. I, ha I don't have it on my computer, so I can't pull it up. It is physically in my hand. You hear this? That's the crinkle of paper. That I have the sideboard guide. It has like... 25 30 different matchups on it i'm ready and that comes from newton's patreon which i'm going to link in the video description newton is a streamer and runs a patreon and is very smart when it comes to elf related business so if you're interested in that go check out newton's patreon and with all of those plugs and conversations out of the way let's jump into this league i am on the play in round one my hand does a bunch of cool things i'm going to keep this the Wirewood Symbiote plus Elvish Visionary Best Friends Club is one of the engines of this deck. Elvish Visionary draws a card when it comes into play. Wirewood Symbiote picks up an elf to untap target creature. If you have a creature like Riot Arbor, which I'm going to have in play shortly due to this Green Sun Zenith, you get to basically play one mana Elvish Visionaries twice per turn. And that's a pretty good engine. Blue decks don't even draw cards that well. Let's see what the matchup is going to end up being. Zenith for zero resolves. Dried Arbor's in play. Let's do this thing. Arrakis, file. Okay, that's interesting because they didn't reveal Yorion, which doesn't necessarily mean anything. They could still be Death and Taxes, or this could be like Esper, vile, or humans, like some different white vile deck. Oh, we'll see. Okay, um, here is Elvish Visionary. Oh, Elvish Reclaimer. Is kind of exciting. I don't think. All right, I'm gonna get a basic forest. I can play virtual rangers here. You tap two elves to get a mana. So tap these two elves, which plays wirewood symbiote, which untaps dryad arbor by picking up my elvish visionary, which then casts elvish reclaimer. Bang. That's a lot of material on turn two. My opponent's putting their first counter on Aether Vial, and I've already cast uh, one, two, three, four, five spells. If I really want to go to Baloney Town, I can Zenith for Collector Oof and turn off this Vial. And the cool thing about Wirewood Symbiote is, okay, Spirit of the Labyrinth is a beating. That turns off the Visionary. But I was just about to say, the cool thing about Wirewood Symbiote, if you've never seen the Elves deck before, is while it's in play, you can't kill elves with spot removal because you can pick them up to untap things and that also dodges removal okay spirit of the labyrinth time to consult the deck list grist can remove that from play endurance could just get in the way of it but that's not the play i think i want grist here just have to figure out what i'm sacrificing for the grist i do want to tutor up cradle this turn but they have the Wasteland over there, so maybe I'm not able to do that. I'm going to fetch and get the Bayou. I'd like them to, the, to commit their Wasteland to something else. 
One, two, three, four. Green Sun Zenith for three. And get Grist out of the deck. And I just have to decide what I'm sacrificing to make this opponent dead, or make this creature dead. The opponent's not dead yet. I could also make a, an insect and wait a turn, but I'm a little worried about that. Maybe it's just Dryad Arbor. So does Virtual Ranger or Dryad Arbor actually represent more damage over a longer game? Or more mana? I can actually make two mana right now if I want to give up on Elvish Reclaimer, which I guess isn't really doing anything. So I can go make a green, untap Dryad Arbor by picking up Ranger, load a green. I'm going to sacrifice Dryad Arbor after all and kill this with my two floating mana. I'm going to play Elvish Visionary and draw a card. Oh, look, there's Cradle. Do I attack my Visionary into Mother of Runes? That's a hell no. That's not a trade I'm interested in. Or my uh, Wirewood Symbiote, not Elvish Visionary. I'm very close to hoofing them with this Cradle. I have three, four, five, six, seven mana with Grist. Uh, Grist will make an insect. Pretty close to hoofing here. Thalia. Oh, wait, I need the Zenith. I'm just like saying words. It's like, yeah, I'm pretty close to hoofing. It's just not even in play. Not even in my hand. I'm going to untap Elvish Reclaimer by picking up Visionary. And I'm going to do this because that gives me an extra Visionary to cast on my turn. Oh, now I'm hoofing. Okay, Elvish Vis. They could vial in another spirit here, but I mostly don't care about that. This is all bait. All right, cool. You got me. You got me good. And Birchler Ranger. Guess this. Make an insect. Hope I don't milk crater off. Oh, oh my god. That. Uh, this is exactly what happened to me at that Buffalo Chicken Dip tournament. I was like, I'm fine as long as I don't draw a bajuka bog. Draw a bajuka bog. I'm fine as long as I don't draw a hoof. Draw a hoof. This happened to me every time. Oh god. I I guess I didn't need that mana, but like that's you don't play around that. That's so stupid. <laughs> okay. Now what what do I do? I can natural order for Archon, but that's is that even good? Like Death and Taxes has Swords to Plowshares and the other thing, um, Solitude. So you can't just like name what their removal is because one of it's a creature. I could Natural Order for Endurance, tuck my graveyard, and just hope to get their next turn. I could Natural Order next turn for... Yeah, I think I'm just going to play Bayou and pass the turn. Then I can Natural Order next turn for Shepherd and activate it. Like, I can activate Reclaimer this turn. God, that's such a fucking tilt. The reverse one-outer. The one-debtor. Stoneforge Mystic is here. They tapped their Wasteland, which is reckless. Unless they have another one. The like, Galvish Reclaimer is right there in play. Uh, they can't attack with Thalia because I have Elvish Reclaimer. Just bricks these tiny offenses. Grist can kill Spirit next turn if I need it to, like if I do want to start unloading with my card advantage. They just put Jitte in their hand. In the end step, green and make another mana. Gonna activate Elvish Reclaimer, getting a Cradle. There's Cradle. They have a Vial. It's gonna exile Grist. What's the play? All right, they can exile something. All right, they are taking Grist. I think that's mostly fine. That was not really part of the plan at this point. Once upon a time, that cost three because of Thalia. If I... I guess the insect off of Grist would have been an extra creature. Or... Shepherd. Am I presenting anything that resembles lethal here? They can't get Jate into play and equip it next turn unless they have Ancient Tomb. Which is not normally in these decks. I think I'm going to Once Upon a Time first. Because if I just hit the Shepherd, I can do this a lot smoother. Oh, I hit Endurance. That might be better. A Heritage Druid. So Endurance can tuck my graveyard, and then I can Natural Order. Okay, we did it, fam. Endurance. Target myself. All right, that felt good. Here's the other Cradle. 
keep the untapped one. And then natural order. Sacking the endurance. That's the creature that has summoning sickness. And now we can hook. Never give up, never surrender. Navigated the reverse one outer there. Maybe the lesson here is just always don't do the thing if it might put you somewhere. If it might mill the one outer, don't do it. <laughs> Gonna play with my heart instead of my math brain from now on. So, per Newton's sideboard guide, we cut the Shepherds, the Archon, and the Endurance, and the Bajuka Bog. It doesn't have much text here. And we bring in. Progenitus, Wasteland, Horse of Vigor, and Assassin's Trophy. That's seven in, seven out by my count, and that makes perfect sense. This deck doesn't have counter spells, so you don't need to worry about that. And they have a lot of removal, which can keep the go wide strat under control. We saw the problem with Archon last game when I couldn't natural order for it because it doesn't line up against anything they're doing. Endurance did save the day, but only because Grist fucked it up, and Bajukabog doesn't do anything. And instead, we're bringing in a bunch of answers to artifacts and enchantments. They're a Stoneforge Mystic deck. They have Umazawa's Jitte, etc. Wasteland has some text. Like, sometimes you can like hit a Caracas or something that's important, or a uh, Wasteland, their Wasteland, before you get your Cradle. Like, those lines come up, but mostly it's just a mana source to replace the ETB-tapped Bajukabog with a land that doesn't ETB-tapped. And in we go. If you've ever watched me play Elves before, you know that when I board in Progenitus, it's in my opener. And not to disappoint, there it is. I'm going to mulligan this because it's already a mulligan. This one looks good to me. It's a little heavy on non-basic lands, but I'm not going to be mad about that. I think I actually want to ship the Force of Vigor. Because they are a Wasteland deck, they're a Rashad and Port deck, and my plan here is just turbo my way up to Progenitus. Opponent has Flagstones of Trocare up with no play. This is pretty clearly a Swords to Plowshares. So I want to lead on the creature I care less about, which I think is Heritage Druid here. I don't have three elves. Wow, they didn't plow? What the shit? Now I don't know anything anymore. And they didn't waste. Are they all in on Stoneforge or Spirit of the Lab? Ratchet Bomb. All right, well, that's going to be tough to get ahead of. Now shipping that Force of Vigor looks silly. What can I do here? If I play Elvish Reclaimer, I have the mana to rotate, but that doesn't matter. I'm just going to run out Dryad Arbor and hope they don't blow their bomb on my fun of Heritage Druid. Like if they just don't respect Heritage Druid, next turn I'll have four mana and I can just jam Natural Order before they do anything. Like this position looks really weak, but I am representing Progenitus right now. But don't worry, even if they don't make the play and remove my things, I'm still just going to draw Progenitus for the turn. Wow, good shot. Get fucked, me. And Stoneforge. Okay, are they going to go into Jitte Town, or do they want to just get Cauldra and get to work here? They are going to Jitte Town. Got it. I can make the same play again, or I could cast Once Upon a Time. No, I'm just going to make the same play again and pass the turn. Let them think that I'm stuck under their, their murderous thumb when I'm actually just a Hydra God lying in wait. So they are passing the turn, it seems. Don't bomb me, bro. Honestly, bombing there would be insanely heads up. One, two, three, four. Sacrifice my one drop that's dead anyway. Please don't have Containment Priest. Rip. Okay, I'll get Grist and kill the Containment Priest. I hope this works. This was bugged for a while. Okay, it works. Yeah, I'm just going to kill Containment Priest and then lose my Grist. Combat. But yeah, them having Priest there is rough. That explains why they kept the hand they did with no interaction. And I mulliganed based on a normal hand, but they had a mega hateful hand. And I'm getting inched in the wrong direction here. At least Grist exists, though. In the past... Priest in response to your natural order just counters natural order. It's just Dovin's veto for white and a colorless. But now you can get something because Grist is a creature when it's not on the battlefield. And by at the point where the game would ask, is that a creature entering the battlefield to exile with containment priest? The 
the game rules see the card as a creature at that or as a planeswalker at that point and they get to dodge all right uh collector oof is actually really good except that i don't have any mana so i think i i lead on symbiote and then i follow up with reclaimer because this way they can't kill both of them with ratchet bomb or they can't like they can make sure like Jitte can connect if they have a land which is just as bad but oof maybe we'll have yeah this game brought to you by mulliganing to the wrong half of the deck i put force of vigor on the bottom thinking i would need my lands but then they haven't touched my lands at all oh wait i can oof right now uh that would cost me a creature though but it would make sure Jitte doesn't happen they have three cards in their hand. We know one of them's Jitte. Yeah, I'm actually going in right now on Oof. They're going to bomb in response. I'll pick up Reclaimer. That also makes Reclaimer a 3 4 for the future. But it checks the Jitte now, which I do like. Of course, if their hand just has Plow or Solitude, they don't need to think about Collector Oof. I'll just, yeah, when I'm ready, I'll clear that out. No plays, no attacks from the opponent. That's really good. I can spend three mana on Once Upon a Time, or I can just pass the turn. I'm going to pass the turn. Every card in my hand is an instant. If they do come up with, like, Batter Skull this turn, I can trophy the skull if I care. I can block bounce if I don't care. I'm Wasteland Proof right now because I have the, the Reclaimer up. They did have Cauldra. Why did they wait? That's weird. They could have just gotten in last turn with that. All right. I gained five life I don't deserve, but I'll take it. Okay, I am Wasteland Proof because of Reclaimer. And by Wasteland Proof, I mean now if I cast Once Upon a Time, I lose my Cradle. <laughs> oh, this sucks. Taking five from Cauldra. Maybe they'll get impatient with Wasteland. I don't know. I just have to hope that they play bad at this point. Yeah, the Thalia is keeping everything in, in check here. Just going to draw a card. <laughs> another one all right this is fading quickly i'm still a natural order away from being ahead though all of that there's good draws left uh not anymore okay i'm willing to concede this game at this point they were able to line up the right sort of thing for what i was doing they had containment priest on the turn where i assembled my my monster I don't think my plan changes here. Uh, uh, for play versus draw. I'm mostly just following Newton's guide anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm in. Let's go. On the play, I have a couple of elves. I have the natural oof and the natural... Natural order? <laughs> well, the natural natural order. I'm going in on Reclaimer first. Play my best elf first. Put them to the test. I can go Birchler Ranger plus Collector Oof next turn if I don't mind playing into Wasteland. Like Natural or, or Birchler Ranger comes into play. It can tap the Reclaimer for one. Cradle gets me to three. I'm not on a turn two Cradle here. Or turn two Natural Order. I, I can now kind of spew off. I can play Birchler Ranger Collector Oof off of basic lands and just ignore the Wasteland contingent. Or I can hang a bayou out there and dare them to waste it. Yeah, I'm actually going to do that. It's the wrong card. Here's Collector Oof. Because if they wasteland my bayou this turn, then they don't have mana for Containment Priest. If they like do anything with their mana this turn, I get to Natural Order. And because I turned off their Vile, they kind of have to. Like, Solitude is like the thing they can do for free, I guess. But if they don't do anything with their mana, I'll just attack with my creatures. Containment Priest kind of blows out attacking with my creatures, too, though. Gotta watch out for that. Oh, they do have Wasteland. Please use it. Please use it. Fuck yeah. Oh no, my Bayou! What will I do now? Oh, my guts. My poor guts. Do they have another removal spell? If they have a third removal spell, this might actually be a good turn for them. Okay, okay. Alright. I talk shit a little too soon. That was insane. Gutshot is ruining the format for everyone. Virtual Ranger, get in there. Dice Cradle, get in there. And I'm not going to attack because I want to leave up rotating. Now they can Priest with their Vile. 
And my oof is gone. Oh no. Oh no. My hubris. Okay, I can rotate this cradle away. No, I want to make them go for the, the Rashadon port. All right, it's tapped. Dryad Arbor. Not what I'm looking for. One, two, three, four. Natural order. Sack the virtual ranger. Please don't have the thing. They didn't have the thing. All right. Here's Progenitus. Now let's do this. Sometimes Death in Taxes has like Council's Judgment in it, but mostly they don't have answers to this card. They went for Jitte. They're planning on doing some attacking this game. If they do just go land Council's Judgment, then this person clearly didn't want to lose to Elves today with their gut shots in there. Containment Priest and Council's Judgments. But we are we did do what we're supposed to do here. Recruiter of the Guard, that's pretty good. If there's a tool, they can go find it here. I don't know if they're going to have, like, Peacekeeper or some shit. There has certainly been technology in lists throughout Legacy's history that could slow this game down, but let's hope they don't have it. And I do have the Assassin's Trophies in the deck, even if they do have Peacekeeper. But I think they'd be moving faster if uh, they had it. Going to cut out the dead air, but they did think about this for a very long time. We went for Sanctum Prelate. That's a weird card to get in this position. Does that matter? Does it do anything? I don't know. Okay. Here is the vial. Is it Sanctum Prelate? It is. Number four. So I can't natural order again. You got me. Here's Dryad Arbor. I drew Assassin's Trophy, which should close most of their outs. Like any out that they did still have, Trophy should address. And they're dead on board. Got to beat up Progenitus here. I don't know. Figure it out. I can activate Elvish Reclaimer and Sack Dryad Arbor. Like if they do try to gain some life with Jete, I can block and rotate away the blocker before damage. I could rotate into Black Mana if they put something into play that I need to address with Assassin's Trophy. There's the Jete. It looks like they're probably gonna just YOLO slam the Recruiter of the Guard into my 3-4 to gain 4 life and stay alive for a turn, but that's not what I'm actually gonna do. Yeah, they get their attack. I'm gonna block and rotate into Bayou. Attack the blocker before damage. No life will be gained, and they are conceding the match. Glad we got away with that one. Would have been a tough start to lose to Death and Taxes, the historically laughable matchup in round one with Elves, but we did get it. On to the next one. I'm on the draw in round two against The Style, who has been on lands the last few times I've paired into this person, but they just revealed Yorion, so I'm sure that's not what's happening. I'm going to keep this Glimpse Hand, because pulling ahead of DNT is a way to beat them. Okay, this is not DNT. It's It's got to be uh, Aloran, I think. Every time an opponent reveals Yorion on this channel, I say, like, it's probably DNT, but there's some weird decks like Aloran. And surprise, that's a tropical island. I'm just going to try to go fast on this opponent and be really disrespectful. So I'm going to Zenith for Dryad Arbor right now. Unfortunately, one of them's in my hand, but luckily I played two. So this hand right now is set up to Glimpse, Sentinel, or Symbiote, draw a card. And then play Cradle with two more mana and another one drop to play. I'm going for the, the Glimpse here. I have two of them. And just like drawing two cards off a of Glimpse isn't that embarrassing anyway. They could plow in response, which slows down like Cradles. All right, I don't care about Ice Fang Quaddle one bit. Unless it digs into a Force of Will. That's fine. I'm going to play the other Dryad Arbor and pass here. I think I'd rather load up an Insane turn three than... I play like a medium turn four. Tundra. It always feels bad casting Ice Fang Quaddle off of Tundra because it's like, come on, that's a snow land. <laughs> Give me a break here. Okay, Glimpse of Nature again. You got a second force? Please don't. This is the plan I have. But they missed their land drop, so we know they have five spells in hand. Force of Negation. Fuck my life. All right. Um, I guess it's time to play out these Wirewood Symbiotes. Or I'll play out one. If I draw a glimpse, I still want to be able to do stuff. And I'm not going to trade a mana-producing land for Ice Fang Quaddle in my deck with Creator Hope Behemoth. 
Preordain. Let's look at what the forces pitch. Preordain and Leovold. So Leovold gives away that there are black mana in this deck, which I have to assume is Aloran. All right, Symbiote, you got me. Wasteland, that's pretty good. Do you save it for Cradle or Clip an Arbor right now? The age-old question. It went after an Arbor right now, sure. None of these are spells. None of them at all. I'm going to get Symbiote out there. Like Maintaining the critical mass of creatures in play if you draw natural order versus... Ugh, another ending. Versus keeping a creature in hand in case you draw a glimpse. It's a tough balance. The third symbiote, are you ready? They have the third prismatic ending. I mean, we know they that both of the cards in hand are spells because they keep missing land drops. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Okay, Ram and Epic Excavator. I mean, that's not really okay because there's Wasteland in their graveyard, but at least it wasn't Leopold. All right, deck, right now is the time that you give me natural order. My life is pain. There's no white source in the deck other than Virtual Arranger, so this Archon of Valor's Reach just rots. And I'm getting wasted just forever. Ugh. Ugh. And I take my three here on defense. I'm going to fetch in the end step. There's only one fetchable left in the deck, and it's basic, basic forest. And if I draw it, I'll feel really bad. And given the run so far, I would definitely draw it. All right, Reclaimer is not bad. That card at least bricks this offense. And it, it both lines up poorly and great against Wasteland at the same time. Like, I can rotate away the cards they're going to waste, but they could just wait and waste the thing I get. Or they can endurance me and make my thing really small. Ponder. Wasteland. Not bluffing anything by floating mana. Just whatever. It's gone. And they get to attack with all these jerks. But eight. Quickly running out of life points. Okay, that's usually a good card. Um, time to get Elvish Visionary and set up the best friends crew. It's resolved. They didn't even blink. Visionary. Let's dig out of this. Let's do it together. Okay, that's interesting. Now we're kind of, like Reclaimer putting the land into play tapped is a giant beating on versus Wasteland. Like if I play Cradle and they just waste it, then it's gone. If I hold it up, they can waste in my upkeep and I can rotate in response for a different Cradle, but then I don't have Cradle going into my actual turn. I can make three mana Glimpse Visionary draw two right now. Or I could just let them waste me past the turn. I think I need to take the draws that I can get. Make three. Untap Reclaimer. Pick up Visionary. I'm going to save the Glimpse because it might be bigger next turn. Alright, that's a land that doesn't do anything. Okay. Maybe, maybe I'm willing to admit that playing that land was terrible. Playing the Cradle was terrible. Maybe I'm supposed to set up a win for next turn. I don't know. Basically, like, Elves isn't really meant to be playing turn 9 against a control deck like this. There's the Wasteland obliterating my Cradle, as you do. I'm gonna get two draws to try to find another Cradle this turn. But we are in bad shape. Still attack. Block the biggest thing here. And before damage, untap Reclaimer by picking up Visionary. I take three. I needed this to assemble like two turns earlier than it did. Even for two. Well, that can't be Leovold. That's lucky. Another Coatl. Trying to redraw. All right, deck. Give me the cradle I don't deserve. Hey! Okay, Glimpse, Visionary, does this even matter? Oh, I can Endurance their Wasteland. That's actually really insane. Um, yeah, let's go. Endurance, I even get a card off this. And Tuck, your Wasteland. Hope you don't have another one. Okay, suddenly we're stable. And, in fact, ahead. But they do have four cards in hand. My life total is dwindling. Uro, yet that's not one I'm worried about, unless it produces a wasteland. They put an island in, and they pondered. They still have their land drop for the turn. Wasteland is, like, literally the only card I'm worried about right now. Everything else is okay. Come on, 80-card deck, don't fail me now. 
Windswept Teeth is not a wasteland, notably. Forest doesn't cast most removal spells. All right, Abundant Growth. Cool. We're going to get a turn. Their snakes did just get Death Touch, so... Well, two of their snakes did. This is also a snake. I guess it's a Naga, which is not technically a snake, only in our hearts. And so I have four, five, six, seven mana. I do want to pick up the Visionary. There may have been some world where leaving Visionary in play is better for the Cradle Count if I can just Zenith straight for a monster, but that's not what we're actually dealing with here. Heritage Druid was a good draw, though. Heritage D. I can make five, six, seven, eight mana right now. One, two, three. Untap Reclaimer by bouncing Visionary. Visionary again. Wrist. Uh, okay, so I have a white card and a black card in my hand. I have no white sources in the deck and no black lands left to search for. Uh, I'd have to wait till next turn to Grist. I can Zenith now for Birchlore Ranger. One, two, three, four, five mana, and it would produce. Like, I'd go up to six mana, I'd go down to four. It would be good for one. Yeah, I'm a mana short of casting Archon this turn. I could cast Grist this turn, if that matters. I could also just Zenith for another Symbiote. I think that's what I want to do. Or I could get Shep. Ooh, yeah, Shepard's a good one. That represents big damage pretty quickly, but I still think Symbiote's better. Unless they combo kill me. Oh wait, the Dryad Arbors are in my deck! I forgot about that. I got Endurance, didn't I? I do still have Dryad Arbors in the deck. Okay, that that makes this a little more interesting. Also, I lost some amount of mana this turn because of that. Whoops. Untap Heritage Druid with Elvish Visionary. Replay Visionary. Come on, Virtual Arranger off the top. Allosaurus Shepherd, pretty good. I'll summon my Shep. And... I am gassed up for next turn, I guess. Uh, is there an attack now? No, because they have the touch. All right, I'm just going to pass, preparing for next turn. I'm kind of medium tilted that I forgot about Endurance tucking my lands back in my deck. That I went like multiple turns without making a land drop there, and I tapped Cradle without getting my Dryad Arbor into play. Just cascade of errors based on that missing piece of information. And now I'm Wasteland proof, because if they Wasteland Cradle, I can tap three Elves and activate Reclaimer, get another Cradle. So I'm not worried about Wasteland right now. Yorian's in the hand. Cool. There. They're making their attacks. They realize that the end is nigh. I'm not going to block with Endurance here. I am going to fetch a Dryad Arbor, which I'm now reminded exists. And I'm going to pick up Elvish Visionary. But first I'm going to float three, just in case. Then we go to my turn. All right, need a payoff. It's time. Start with Visionary. Draw. All right, is this lethal with just the the Shepherd? I have one, two, three Elves that can attack. No, that's not lethal with just Shepherd. I'm going to make three mana with my Elves, with my Heritage Druid. Untap Heritage Druid by bouncing Symbiote. Replay Visionary. Just looking for natural order or hoof to end this game. Once upon a time, I can tap three elves again. I have the other symbiote that can untap Reclaimer. Visionary, get in there. Another Vis, let's keep it going. Cradle taps for roughly infinity, an entire finity. I can still. Is there anything I can do in between that? Uh, I guess the. Any additional elves I put into play before I tap Cradle are free. One, two, three. I do have three untapped elves. One, two, three. There's Heritage Druid. There's Once Upon a Time. Find me the hoof. There's the hoof. Then here's hoof. Oh, wait. I think I should Grist first. Yeah, that gives me an extra creature. Plus Grist. Milled natural order, which is fine because I have all of the targets in my hand right now. They're plowing Reclaimer in response, reducing the number of elves I have before conceding. 
Yeah, that was the textbook case of how messed up Elvish Visionary and Wired Symbiote are against Veridex. According to Newton's notes, the, I'm, I'm not sure whether to count this as bant or bug, so I'm going to call it bug, which I imagine the giant tiebreaker between the two is Plague Engineer. So Oof and Archon don't really do anything. Newton advises to cut Heritage Druid. Which makes sense, because that elf sucks if you have no other elves, and if they have Plague Engineer, then you're not going to have any elves. And it looks like we're just in on Progenitus here. I like that plan. Uh, there is Grist that can remove a Plague Engineer from play if necessary. Assassin's Trophy. If I knew for sure they were a Lauren, I would do that, but this could just be some Yorion value blink deck. I don't know. I'm going in like this. We're just going to try to get a quick Progenitus. This hand contains Crater Hoof Behemoth, which is probably bad news. This doesn't have a glimpse, doesn't have an order. I'm going to mulligan this. This one I'm going to keep. I think I'm going to send Bayou to the bottom. Oh, wait, no, I'm literally holding Thoughtseize. <laughs> that card's in my hand. All right, I'm going to send Windswept Heath to the bottom. My plan is to lead on Zenith, and then Thoughtseize plus additional spell next turn. Drawing a basic forest was nice, because we've seen Wasteland out of them. Like, it wasn't important enough that I would jeopardize a playable hand. Like, sending the Bayou to the bottom when I have a black spell, I don't like. But now that I have the option to do both, I'm glad I can lead on the basic. Yeah, there's Wasteland. Got me. Now I can Thoughtseize and Zenith. See what you got. Normally I would want to wait until they had a... A th they were like untapping into their third land because that's where you can catch the the plague engineer but since i have the mana available now i would like to give it a peek and i think i want to shepherd this turn with my one mana like now that i'm going up into three and four mana the zenith gets a lot more valuable than being one extra mana when that's already going on they have coatl and grist i guess i'll take grist it's just a thing that says destroy target creature on it in my deck full of creatures. Tundra. If they hid prismatic ending, that's fine. I regained perfect information about their hand now. All right. That's why we hold on to Green Sun Zenith, because sometimes you draw Elvish Visionary. Visionary go. Another one. Okay, I'm going to play this land. My plan is to fetch for the other Dryad Arbor and then untap into a giant cradle turn. Unless they do have the Plague Engineer right now. In which case, I'll have to do something different. Gram an app. Okay, that's good news. And I have perfect information about their squad, or about their hand right now. Three cards is Heath, Ice Fang, and the other thing. I think I can fetch the Arbor. Like, I see the Wasteland in the graveyard. Don't worry, I didn't miss it. But I'm going to try to pull ahead hard enough right now while the getting's good that I don't care about that. I have to figure out sequencing here. Does it matter what order I do this in? It might. I'm going to do the, the symbiote first. Symbiote. Does this matter? Maybe this didn't matter after all, but okay. I'm going to make green. Untap this by bouncing visionary. Play the visionary again. And I can play around wasteland for a turn, or I can just lean in. I'm leaning in ahead yeah like the one drop this cradle is scary or like the wasteland sucks on my cradle but they would die if they didn't do it which is the position i want to put them in wastelands here got it and i'm gonna pick up a visionary in the end step i am in the business of drawing cards right now oh bajuka bog you don't say you mean against this opponent who's trying to waste lock me I drew Bajuka Bog. I'm gonna cast Visionary again. I'll save this glimpse for next turn when I'm ready to dig in on it. And bog them now. That was great. What's up, Bajuka Bog? Hang out. There's that windswept teeth. Not gonna lie, I've lost track of if we know about the snow covered island or if it's the one in play, but I'm pretty sure it's still in there. Ooh, that's really good and terrible for me. Good for them, terrible for me. Guess it's time to just Activate Allosaurus Shepherd. Okay, I can play my fourth land, attack with all my elves. 
If they have swords to plowshares, they can dance around this a little bit. But my plan is to just turn all my elves sideways and make them five fives. But they could actually blow me out really hard with a swords to plowshares because I need to untap Dryad Arbor with Symbiote. And maybe I wait a turn. Maybe I just sit back on D and next turn go for the big swing when I have more mana to make it happen with. Because I have to go four lands, five, bounce an elf, untap is number six. If they wait, like if I attack and I wait to see what their blocks are to see if I'm going to pump, and then they plow my arbor before it untaps for the six mana, then they just eat all of my creatures in combat. The plow resolves on arbor and I have to bounce the elf. And my board is just Wirewood Symbiote. Yeah, I don't have an attack here. Not a safe one anyway. Got no attack. I'm gonna play the second symbiote and pass. The risk was too big there. Like the the best case scenario is like they lose Leovold and take five damage. And the worst case scenario is you lose the game. So I'm gonna take the one that doesn't lose me the game. You also have a Zenith for three. Plague Engineer is a black card, so you can't get that. Leovold's already in play. What's the next most horrifying thing? Okay, Uro. Yeah, yeah, all right, all right. I can live with that. Investing in the future. Field of the Dead. I like this deck. Uh, they are in the field starting next turn with a fetch land, no less. So they're going to have two zombies moving forward. Birds of Paradise. All right. It's time to draw a Cradle and just slam Crater Hoof into play. Zenith. Does Zenith do anything I need it to do? I could Zenith Endurance, but they get to draw a card. I could Zenith Grist. That kills Leovold. That's actually insane. Yeah, killing Leovold here seems worth it to me. Find myself a Grist. And then Dried Arbor's already in the graveyard. I guess I don't need two Visionaries. I'm going to sack my bonus Visionary to kill Leovold. They get to draw a card off of that. There is a Bayou still in my deck to fetch. One, two, first visionary. On Cradle. Okay. Untap Arbor, pick up the Vig. You have to go for my land. Bayou. The visionary. And I think having visionary in two elves, two symbiotes is better in play than passing the turn with three symbiotes and one elf. So I'm going to just pass here. The Quaddle can take out Grist, but he did his job. Mostly unlocking the Glimpse is the important part of that interaction. In the for two. God, what cost two? A Quaddle. They're just cantripping. They're just digging frantically for that Plague Engineer. Brainstorm. They're getting a lot of looks at it. And with Grist right here, in play already, and on one loyalty, my answers to that card no longer exist. I would have to Endurance myself, put Grist back in the deck, get Grist again, Kill Plague Engineer, or just sacrifice a non-elf creature to Natural Order and get Progenitus, and win through it. They have four mana. This is where they can reveal if they're a Lauren or not. I'm starting to think they're not, though. This, like, this looks like it could just be some 80-card Zenith value deck. They kept a card on top with Preordain. That's scary. They're going to attack Grist. I don't have any flying blockers. What's gone? End step, I'm going to pick up a Visionary. Just digging hard into this Glimpse right now. Got to find a Cradle somewhere up the chain. Here's Glimpse. They could do the Swords to Plowshares, your creature. And then, okay, they're plowing that. Interesting. Okay. I have more of those. Uh-oh, maybe I don't have more of those. Um, I'm going to float, untap, and bounce it, Shepherd. This makes Glimpse counterable, but it gives me an extra creature if it resolves. Adio. Alright, I can Progenitus, maybe. If I don't blow this. Which I'm going to do my best. But I, I'm swinging for the Cradle, come on. Deck's called Oops All Cradles, give me one. Symbiote. Another Glimpse. With the Birchler Rangers, that's pretty exciting. Birchler Ranger, let's go. Represents a lot of mana. There's the Cradle. There's two Cradles. About time. Make green, green. Allosaurus oh, Shep, draw two. And Cradle. 
is good for six mana. Gonna untap Dried Arbor before I sack my symbiote here. Or no, I don't need two shepherds. All right, shepherd's gone. Progenitus is in play. I didn't have enough creatures that could attack this turn to make Crater Hoof lethal. That was the problem with that line. And Birchler Ranger, I can cast, which lets me cast Thought Seize. I'm just making a zillion mana and passing the turn with Thought Seize up, or Thought Seizing and then passing. Reclaimer here as well. Let's sneak another elf in. Why not? And Thought Seize you. Thought Seize your two card hand. Take Black. Endurance Ponder. I'm going to take Ponder. Endurance is the card in your hand. And you are required to defeat a Progenitus. And Crater Hoof's also in my hand, by the way. Discard the three extra fetch lands. Unless they have a sweeper, I think we're good here. Oh, they drew another Ponder. Oh no. They did not shuffle the Ponder. What the fuck? That's terrifying. Bro. Okay. Uro can probably race this Progenitus, which is fun. But, okay, they put an island into play. So their hand is Endurance and a Mystery card. All right, I think we're good. I mean, I think they might effectively have Progenitus raced here, but they don't, they don't know about this hoof that's coming. And I'm going to Zenith for a backup Shepherd before I hoof in case they go for, like, removal spell into Counterspell. Spending mana. Are you just going to put your in in hand? What's going on here? This fetch land out of the graveyard does produce two zombies to block with. Not super worried about that. Brainstorm's really good. But they tapped out of black, so they don't have the one card I'm most worried about. Oh, no, they didn't. They have Birds of Paradise. Oh, there's so much going on right now. Abundant growth on their Field of the Dead. It's now a real boy. If they're tapping black mana, did they find it? Oh, they did. Okay. Just have to do a little damage control here. I have an elf that's too big. I have a hydra avatar. I have an insect. And I have a forest dryad. So, untap dried arbor by picking up elvish visionary. And then I should still have enough to lethally hoof them next turn. Yeah, that was a, a, a miracle turn, if there ever one was. Okay, time to figure out how many creatures I can get into play. I can 1, 2, 3, 4. I can Zenith for 3. Pretty sure Endurance is still in my deck. I hope it is, because I'm casting this card. Uh, yes, there's Endurance. Who can tuck my deck into my deck for more fun and profit. Oh, that nope, that doesn't kill my Reclaimer. I almost, I was worried. Thought I fucked up. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So there's five. Can I once upon a time here? So five, six. Yeah, I'm good to once upon a time. I can still hoof and maybe find another creature. Yep. Reclaimer's in there. And new cradle. Six, eight mana. Bang. And here they come. I'm going to attack with all my creatures. Math is for blockers. There's a 17-17 protection from everything, so they have to absorb three damage elsewhere. Or all but three damage elsewhere. But they're not able to, and we're in there. That was grindy and weird. That was some fun elf-related shenanigans. Here comes the next round. We're about halfway through the video, so let me just remind you that if you like this deck and you want to try it out, you can use the code Boston Roll to support the channel while you shop for cards at tcgplayer.com, and you can play any deck anytime with cardhoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. These links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. On the play in round three, my hand is pretty explosive. I'm going to keep it. Got a cradle, a glimpse. We're in. Oh. They revealed two Chancellors of the Annex. Well, <laughs> activate hard mode, I suppose. Um, I could simply concede, or I can play... I have to pop this bubble. Just have to figure out what the right way to pop it is. Um, like, I think I need... Well, like, Zenith for Endurance doesn't really matter, because they can Entomb as an instant. I think I'm just going to play Symbiote into the, and break the Chancellor bubble. Just pass. All right. 
If they cast Exhum, at least I'll get a Symbiote. This is historically one of the most heinous matchups that it possibly ever exist in all of Magic the Gathering, but Newton has constructed the sideboard specifically with combo decks geared. Uh, how I can... Alright, I have to Zenith for Reclaimer here, and at least then I'm representing Bajuka Bog if they don't go off right now. Alright, Reclaimer's in play. And I have a pretty big Glimpse turn set up. I've done what I can do. And honestly, going to hand size discard and then discarding Chancellor isn't that isn't super impressive. Uh, unmasking me is pretty strong. I get to take my Glimpse and now I'm all the way in hard mode. But as far as creatures in the Legacy card pool that win the game completely on their own, Chancellor of the Annex is not one of them. And if I draw Allosaurus Shepherd, I get to completely ignore it. Okay, uh, I'm going to cast, I think Birchler Ranger comes down first. I have to pay the troll toll. That comes into play. Gaia's Cradle now. I can rotate into Bog at my leisure. This game is completely winnable. They attack for five. I'm going to rotate Forest into a different land, probably a fetch land, just for thinning purposes. Oh, I'm going to get... Wooded Foothills, and then in my upkeep, I'll fetch. I'm just going to get another forest for now. Glimpse. How deep can I go on this? Uh, Glimpse cost two, and then the elves each cost two. I can kind of push on a Glimpse, but I can't leave up a Jukabog if I do it. I think I'm just going to play the A Heritage Druid, and then attack with Virtual Ranger and pass the turn. I can take two more hits from this Chancellor before I really care. Go to eight here. Just have to be careful not to rotate into fetch lands that take a turn off the clock. Rotate. Doing the, another fetch land. I could get Dryad Arbor here. That might be better. It's basically two mana for my turn instead of one. Once upon a time. Are you good? If I tap Cradle, I get four mana, which can... Glimpse of Nature plus Heritage Druid and leave mana around. All right, I'm going to use this as a development turn. Yes, pay the one. Heritage Druid. Oh, this has to resolve first. Heritage Druid. Yes, pay the one. Draw. Natural Order. Are you dead? You look dead. Uh, okay. I'm going to attack for two and pass the turn. And then next turn I win with Natural Order. And they can't reanimate a second thing. As long as I don't draw the hoof. Grief. God damn it. Fucking with me. Alright. Well, there's grief. They get to strip my natural order. Which does take... Completely change the... The clock. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're actually at one on board. If they crack this fetch land, I can kill them. Just on board. Or if they crack either of these fetch lands, please do that. Okay, they're at 8. I can attack for 8. I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on board, and I can rotate into the other Dryad Arbor for 8. Animate dead, targeting my Wirewood Symbiote. Oh, okay. They want me to bog myself? What does this do? Uh, if I bog, I can't get the, the Dryad Arbor. Do I care if Symbiote's in play? Probably not. It's a zero one. one Yeah, I'm just not responding to this. Okay. You have your zero one symbiote. Have fun with that. We do go to three here. I'm still gonna rotate into the other dried arbor. And I also I have the bonus action here of once upon a time into endurance to block. Second cradle is real good. Okay. Once upon a time. Please find me some action. And cast anything. Allosaur Shepherd, that looks lethal. And I don't have to pay the one. Nope. Bang. Activate. I was one damage short, and that certainly represents a lot of it. And opponent packed it up. The slow reanimate Chancellor of the Annex is not what you're looking for right there. Against super fast combo decks, you generally don't have time to do the best friend squad thing, the visionary symbiote business. We're going to cut some number of those. 
Arc on a Valor's Reach, I think I'd rather win the game if we're casting Natural Order than try to control what they're doing. And then we just bring in the Thought Seizes, the Endurances. This is what I was talking about with Newton's sideboard stacked towards combo. Crop Rotation is an additional Bajuka Bog. And Wasteland can clip their business. Also helps cast Endurance more reliably once we get to 3 mana. And there's frequently some consideration of do you bring in something like Assassin's Trophy to remove a monster once it's in play, or do you just dedicate all your resources to making sure that doesn't happen? And Newton has led on or decided on the make sure it doesn't happen version of that. <laughs> My opponent just said in the chat, I hope a good player like you doesn't play Leyline. Well, let's find out together. Well, I appreciate the banter. I'm not going to reply and give them a uh, an answer. They said they bet on Endurance and Thoughtseize. I would bet on that too. I'm going to mulligan this hand. Once upon, like no hate. Can't rely on Once Upon a Time. Like if they have Chancellor, Once Upon a Time doesn't even do anything. There we go. I'm going to put Forest in the bottom. And they didn't have a Chancellor. So we got that going on. Thoughtseize, sure. You got my Endurance. If that's what you want. Yep, safe bet on that one. Jukabog, lol. Uh, that's a pretty bad card to have just naturally in my hand. You do want to rotate into it at instant speed, but if they don't entomb reanimate right now, like all at once, if they go on any sort of like slow strat, maybe I can play the bog. I don't know. If they faithless looting, I have a chance at bog being live. There's looting. Please pass the turn. Please pass the turn. I don't have a lot of optimism that they're going to pass the turn without making a creature, but if they do, I'm ready. They discarded Sarah's Emissary. Uh, I don't have a plan for that one. Okay, so they don't take damage from creatures anymore. Uh, time to consult the Necros Ages here. Um, Grist can kill that, but that's all I got going on. All right, I'll take a shot at it. Um... I'm going to Bajuka Bog to at least clear the looting. Maybe it was bad to show them that, but I think it'll be okay. Visionary. I have to have creatures in play. Or uh, I should have saved the Bog. Because next turn, if I natural order for Grist, sack my creature, then Bog, then the Emissary's out. Yeah, I probably should have saved the Bog. Yeah, I, I think I just blew my one chance at uh keeping that under control by playing the Bog out. I just saw the Faithless Looting and was like, yeah, let me get rid of that. But not important. We discarded an Animate Dead. So they discarded an Animation Spell rather than a Monster. Dark Ritual. What's their last card that they're Dark Ritualing into right now? Oh, Hardcast Grief? Shit. That sucks. <laughs> See you later, Natural Order. Well, it is time to draw a Zenith or different Natural Order. Don't get a whole lot of turns here. Endurance, thanks for showing up. Uh, their creatures are unblockable. Their permanents have protection from creatures. You and creatures, you can draw protection from creatures. Cool. So I can't even endurance them, which means I should play out a land that fetches Dryad Arbor, swinging for the fences on this Grist line. I take 10, I go to 3, and I fetch Dryad Arbor and hope to draw Grist or something that gets Grist. Animating my Endurance. Checkmate. I'll Endurance myself. That even puts an extra Natural Order in the deck. Okay, now I shuffle that Natural Order into the deck with this Fetch Land. I've done everything that I can do about this. Draw a Payoff right now deck. Let's go! The Shep. Alright, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> Insane that we were still playing to outs there. I just read this card one more time, make sure this works how I think it does. You and creatures you control have protection. Yeah, so you, they don't take damage. Yep, okay. Dead. Maybe I should have an Assassin's Trophy or two in the deck. I, I don't know. No, I, I just want to stop that from happening, I guess. I'm going to follow Newton's lead. Let's queue back in with the same deck here. The Collector Oof could be an Assassin's Trophy. It's just like, oof can turn off Lotus Petals and stuff to keep them from functioning. 
at full capacity on the front end versus trophy, which only really plays on the back end once the creature's already in play. And in the case of in the case of Grizzlebrand, it doesn't matter. Like you definitely don't want it to arrive in the first place. But in the case of Sarah Emissary, you would rather kill it. I, I don't know. It's tough. I'm just gonna follow Newton's advice, but this is what I'm gonna do. This is a pretty good starting hand. Let's go. This can even pop a Chancellor bubble because I have Once Upon a Time. Yep, there's Chancellor. I can see it. Bang. I will not pay the one. And then I'll thought it's easy. Free spells are cool. Let's see if I can collapse this hand or not. Is it robust? Or do we have one I can break? Entomb? Two reanimates, two, one grief. Uh, they can grief on turn two. I'm just going to take the entomb, I guess. Do my best here. Okay, you can't take the grief. They, they would just reanimate it. Dark ritual. No, entomb is the take with the texture of my hand. They're going for grief. They can't target themselves with that. But they can strip my natural order and then reanimate grief. And I just have two lands in my hand facing down a 3-2 creature. Just playing this like a game of modern, I guess. They pitched the dark ritual to make that happen. Okay. I have to beat a 3-2. Once upon a time is pretty cool. Doesn't help me right now. I'll save it for the end of turn. And I take three. I'm going to fetch the other bayou. They're not going to mess with my mana base, I don't think. Sometimes this, these decks have, like, Magus of the Moon, but I don't think that's what I'm going to be dealing with here. I'm going to take Symbiote, the literally any creature. Oh, yeah. I thought this was too slow for this matchup, but it's looking good now. I would really like to sneak a Dryad Arbor into play here, but that doesn't look like it's going to happen. Okay. I can block and trade with Grief at the point where it becomes relevant. And I can draw extra cards in the meantime. Unfortunately, Grief has Menace, so I can't just block Bounce forever. End of turn, Bounce my Vige. Heard a Druid, cool. Thoughtseize. Um, do I care what's in their hand right now? Thoughtseizing myself and losing a life kind of sucks. I am going to Thoughtseize them. It, or I can Thoughtseize next turn. You want to save the Bog for when I'm going to Thoughtseize. I can attack with Symbiote right now, though. That's sweet. Bang. Starting to grind forward here. Their hand is still Reanimate Chancellor and one Mystery card. I get two more draw steps before I have to start blocking. Bounce the Visionary. Shepherd, are you good? Probably. Usually are. I'm going to Visionary first. See where this goes. Another Shepherd. I like that. Uh, I can Shepherd. And then make three mana, untap, and play these creatures again. Cradle. Okay. There's Shepherd. One, two, three, four. I am a mana short of activating. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm going to play Cradle. Now they can't attack. I should have attacked with Symbiote. I missed a the damage there. Okay, they, it's on them now. They have to figure out something else to do. Because I can block and activate Heritage Druid, then activate Shepherd and just eat their grief with a double block five fives. And they packed it up. Grind out Reanimator. I lost the game where they actually did Reanimator shit. And I won the game where, or I won the games where, like game one was just sort of like an embarrassing go to discard Reanimate. But if they thought I was on blue, like I frequently am, then. Maybe that's more defensible. This game, I actually did collapse their hand with Thoughtseize. Just took that into him, which would have been, you know, whatever beats me. And we they had to get weird with it, and I was able to punch through that. Oh, yeah, undefeated. Let's keep it going. I'm on the draw for round four. That Dried Arbor and Hoof in the hand here. That's kind of like two mulligans. This Zenith. You get the other Arbor, so I do have some acceleration. I think this hand sucks, though. I'm going to ship it. Much more interested in this. I'm going to keep it, and I think I'm going to send Grist into the deck. Or maybe it's a land. Yeah, it's actually a land. Grist is a card I can cast, and it may surprise my opponent just arriving from the hand. Don't even Zenith for it. Playing the Delver matchup. Okay. 
know what our job is here. And naturally, I drew the Dryad Arbor, as you do. I have some options here. I can put Reclaimer into play, or I can Zenith for Arbor, where if they kill my Arbor, Reclaimer will arrive in 3-4 mode. Like I, I don't really like... All right, I'm going to Zenith. I don't really like giving them a chance to Bolt Reclaimer when I don't have to do that. Once it's a 3-4, it becomes really hard for them to deal with. And then if they can't deal with it in play, it becomes really easy to rotate for the Juka Bog and keep them off Murktide. Or eat a DRC in combat, things like that. Delver flipped Revealing Ponder. There's the Ponder. They chose to shuffle. Can I also just say how relieved I am that this is Delver and not Ragavan? Just the difference. Oh, that's weird. Why would you gut shot? something that you can hit with Wasteland against a deck that you know has more X1s in it? I don't know. I think they're going to get rewarded because I'm going to play this Dryad Arbor and they'll waste it. But, wow. Didn't like that. Right, I'm going to play the Reclaimer and hope they just don't think about Wasteland properly. Yep. Okay. Well, dazed me. Dazed me real good. Still glad this is Delver and not Ragavan. There's the Wasteland. The next Reclaimer will be large, but of course, I will need to find a land to do anything here. Now I'm looking foolish for bottoming that other land. Okay. That card doesn't have for mana. Reclaimer. It's in 3-4 mode. I'm running out the Cradle because land drops are precious now, and even if they just waste it for basically no value, it's still like the upside of having it in play is worth it. Okay, cool. I'm going to be able to bog before they can mark. Probably. Unless they are, they already made their land drop. So yeah, this is a pretty aggressive iteration, actually. They're just slamming in here. Uh, they've already used a bobble. Most lists only have one or two. Yeah, Ponder got exiled and they're not going to be able to cast it. So the clock is very fast at this point. Come on, deck. Help me out here. Endurance is kind of interesting, but not exactly helpful. It does let me develop my board here a little and still pressure their graveyard. Elvis Visionary, go. Wow, they dazed that. Aggro AF. They surveilled Force of Will into the graveyard. I think... So, I'm going to have to time this correctly. I'm going to do it now. I'm going to cast Endurance, shrink their DRC, and make sure they can't mark Tide. I would have loved to do this in combat. I guess they can't. I should have let them attack. Because if they want to attack for their three flying, then they can't cast Merc Tide pre-combat. I was just worried about them just jamming a, a giant creature right there. I'm in a pretty bad spot right now. That was enough mana denial to really get under me. Taking three, going to four. Once upon a time, not what I'm looking for. Cast it. Heritage Druid, Allosaurus, Shep, Bayou. So I'll take the Bayou and play it. I'm dead to Bolt, dead to Gutshot, dead to everything. Dead to getting Delirium. Expressive Iteration, they still have their land drop. Yeah, they just revealed Lightning Bolt. I'm dead. We don't have to keep playing this. The sideboard plan. Newton advises that we get off Natural Order entirely and cut the dead card Collector Oof. And we bring in the extra endurances and the extra trophies. The theory behind this sideboard plan is that the glimpse of nature, especially with the help of Alice or Shepherd, even if that draws like two or three cards, it's still going to pull ahead against a Delver deck. And endurance is a fat body that can block Delver. Endurance is a fat body that checks the graveyard and keeps Murktide out of play. And Assassin's Trophy can answer a Murktide that's in play. The 3-4 Elvish Reclaimer represents a 1-mana Tarmogoyf with Graveyard Hate attached, and trying to resolve a 4-mana spell against the Daze deck full of Lightning Bolts is not ideal. So we're just becoming the rock, basically. The deck still has combo potential. We still have the Heritage Druids and stuff, still Elasaur Shepherd. We can still do that, but the jamming Natural Order is not the play. This hand... 
relies pretty heavily on Once Upon a Time to get off the ground. Is that a deal breaker? I mean, against Delver, I don't really love it, but I do have Cradle and multiple one drops. I am going to keep this. Let's play the Once Upon a Time game. I don't think there's a universe where an opponent force of wills Once Upon a Time. But even if they do, I do have lands. Kinda. Slightly interesting choice here. I could take the forest straight up, or I could take the Misty Rainforest, which thins my deck out and invests in the first Elvish Reclaimer. I'm going to do that. And I am just going to get a basic off of it. Even though I do have black cards in the deck, I'll find black mana when I need it. Like we saw last game, I'm more worried about mana denial than Murktide Regent in these early games, early parts of the game. Onder, and chose to shuffle. Elsor Shepherd. Ooh, okay, that's good. I'm going to play Cradle to play around Daze. If they daze me here, it taps the Cradle, but I think that's still okay. That shot's a little annoying. I mean, tapping Cradle now and after Heritage... Oh, I should have floated one. Now they can daze. Fuck, I'm such a dingus. All right, got away with it. Going to play Heritage... Or er, Firewood Symbiote. That lets me get ahead of the next removal spell. The next removal spell has to target Symbiote, and I'm invested in my future for a big visionary turn next turn. Unless, of course, they find Wasteland, at which point I just attack for two. And their graveyard has enough cards in it that I don't feel bad about bogging them here, just to get ahead of the, the mark. They do have the Wasteland, okay. And the Gutshot, my goodness. Two Gutshots, no problems. Allosaurus Shep, hell yeah. I'll cast that card. And then I'm going to attack for one, and then bog them. They have not presented a threat yet, and this bog will slow down the Murktide. Bog you. Let's hope there's a Murktide region in their hand that just pooped out its breakfast. Lightning bolting my Shep. Strong. Now that's the part of the game where you start trying to pull ahead with two-for-ones. They've done a good job one-for-oneing, but here come additional things. And Heritage Druid getting in there. Next turn, it's going to be kind of tough for them to keep me off three elves. Unless they have a, a sweeper like Blazing Volley or the new... There's an upgraded Blazing Volley from the new Innistrad set. It like does one to all creatures, planeswalkers, and players. Like end the festivities or commence the festivities. Something about festivities. Let's hope they don't have that, is what I'm saying. I'd also like to point out that this Elvish Reclaimer is one land away from being active, and it would be two lands away from being active if I had taken the basic instead of the fetch four basic on turn one. Investing in the future has paid off again. Thanks, Ronald Reagan. They found a wasteland, so Elvish Reclaimer is a 3-4 now. Endurance, my homie. I'm going in on, well, <laughs> it's the only spell I can cast, so I'm casting Elvish Reclaimer. That was a really tough daze. Because that Reclaimer would have represented three mana to cast Endurance with. And that Endurance would keep them off Murktide. Now I have to decide if I'm going to pitch once upon a time to Endurance them. I think I should. I don't feel good about this. Really wish that they just hadn't dazed my spell. That would have been great. But get that out of there. Wrap Digger's Cage. Okay, that's a strong one. It's also clearly what they drew this turn or else it would have been in play a hundred years ago. How about a land to cast my Elvis Visionary? That would be great. Keep this party going. Wow, Submerge. Relentless. Relentless pain. Yeah, that's the full time walk. Take one for my attack, but that hurt. Cut the clock in half from six turns to 11 turns. Also, just straight time walked me because they know I didn't have a land. But I do now. I'm going to make my attack first to see if they have some reaction to that. To be careful not to fetch Dryad Arbor here, because it will not be allowed to come into play. I'm going to get the basic. I'm not going to let them take me off Wasteland and lock these Visionaries back in my hand. Wow, just firing off Lightning Bolts left and right. They're scrapping here. They're really trying to get that Murktide into play. Wow, just Bolt, Bolt. Get out of here, is what they said. One, two, three, four, five. A fetch land cast Murktide. Oh, Expressive Iteration sets them up pretty easily next turn. There's land. They can definitely Merc me next turn. Here's C. Symbiote. 
right, I'm going to play Reclaimer and Symbiote and just hope we can race or somehow remove this Murktide that is happening here. My bog's already been used this game. Yep, there's that. That could have arrived. I just want to point out that could have arrived on turn three and we delayed it twice. It's turn eight at this point. I'm going to I think I have Divisionary here. I need some action. Bolting, sure. They've drawn a lot of lightning bolts this game. And, oh, Endurance. I mean, it's not exciting. It might buy me some time. I can't endure them again, though, because their Mirko will get huge. Wow, instantly delirious. So I can Endurance them after they attack. It's just... I don't think that I should. Like, I can end pitch cast Endurance. Dragon's Ray Channeler falls out of the sky. I eat it. But the Murktide will become a 10-10, and I'm dead in two. But if I find the land to cast Endurance next turn, I can bomb their graveyard, eat Dragon's Ray Channeler, chump Murktide. Uh, come on, land. Ooh, that is the land. Wirewood Symbiote. Guy's Cradle. Attack with Elvish Visionary. Or no, I should attack with both. Yeah. I gotta win this race somehow. If their hand is Force of Will, I lose. If I can beat... I actually am set up to beat Day's uh, Lightning Bolt. They're tapping two mana. If this is the second Mark Tide, then they just dodged really well. Damn! That sucks. And all I can do is jump with Endurance. I guess I'll target myself. Oh, nope, shit. Shouldn't have targeted myself. <laughs> Forgot about Elvish Reclaimer. I was like, I'll just target myself. I'll get those good cards back in my deck. It doesn't matter anyway, but it does. It matters a lot. And I just fucked it. Heritage Druid. Probably not what we were looking for, but I can at least try to do stuff here. Visionary. Get a redraw. Okay, we're dead. I did not play that game perfectly, like very far from it, but they also had a lot of red spells early on and a lot of wastelands in a way that lined up really poorly for me. Tough beats. The trophy is dead. On to the final round. I'm on the draw in the final round. I am going to keep this hand. The Bajuka Bog's not pretty, but I have Reclaimer, Heritage Druid, Glimpse, Natural Order. Like, this hand's got legs. Just needs to uh, either find a second land or let me keep my Heritage Druid. Opponent mold to six. That's good news. Urza Saga, okay. Playing turn one Urza Saga means they have fast mana in their deck. Like Ancient Tomb. Well, here's the Mox Opal and the Lotus Petal, so confirmed. But we would have known that even if they didn't play them out. I'm gonna put Reclaimer into play. Oh, this Saga. Okay, now it can activate. I was about to say it can't actually activate because they don't have two mana, but now they do. They have a land that also turned on Lotus, or Mox Opal. Wrong. On Forest. Or Guy's Cradle, even better. Did draw a Forest. Unfortunately, Bog's in my hand already, so I can't, like, rotate and mess with their graveyard, but I don't think that actually does anything. I'm going to play Visionary now, just for higher velocity next turn like cast my more expensive spell now and then i'll be able to glimpse heritage druid go next turn and by go i mean go off not pass the turn can't attack here because they would just block with their four four and we'll see what they name with their pithing needle or if they just get shadow spear and get to work do they get led and take a spin let's find out together I'm having the thought right now, like, I wonder if I'm supposed to just not cast Visionary and get Cradle for next turn. Just use the two mana for Reclaimer, make sure Cradle's unlocked for the next turn. Is that how this deck is supposed to be played? Am I just doing it wrong? I'd be willing to believe that. But I also think I'm set up extremely well to go pretty hard right now. Oh, that helps. Glimpse of Nature. Please don't have Force of Will. The Shepherd plus Glimpse thing is a little awkward because I really want to draw the card off Shepherd, but I also want my Glimpse to resolve. Kind of tricky. Spending mana in response. Metallic Rebuke. Fuck. Uh, okay. 
I can't pay three. You got me. All right, Heritage Druid, get in there. Uh, tap three or three mana. Play Wirewood Symbiote. Untap Reclaimer with Symbiote. And replay Visionary. Another Shepherd's been drawn. I'll bog them just because that's my land drop. And I can absorb one of these attacks with the Visionary Symbiote trick. And then hopefully resolve Natural Order next turn. And Metallic Rebuke got me good. Bobbled and saw Allosaurus Shepherd at random. Okay. Well, they're not going to prioritize Chalice of the Void this turn. <laughs> they saw Allosaurus Shep. I'm glad they didn't see the Natural Order. That's the more important thing. I wonder if I'm just supposed to take 8 this turn and not do the Symbiote trick because I'm just going to like Shepherd Natural Order. Be sure it's lethal. Cavern of Souls. The creature is human, so this is an Urza deck. Emery is not a human. Psy is a human. I guess it could be Psy and not Urza. Anglewire. Am I getting betrayed by my own bullshit? Wait, is this my deck? Is this my Urza prison deck? I just got really excited. Um, okay. What happens if I just say okay to Tanglewire? If I take 10 here, I would have to tap 1, 2, 3, Four. Then I can play Shepherd. I have three mana for elves. <laughs> My opponent just said in the chat, Yup, it's this deck. Thanks for the content as always. Can you hear me? I think I am going to block bounce here. Block. And Tangle Wire's fucked. Who put that back in the format? I don't like it. I'm going to take five. Now I need to tap four permanents. Symbiote's definitely one of them. One, two, Heritage Druid, Reclaimer. I don't think it can be Reclaimer. If I draw a land, I'm good. If I don't, I'm bad. Okay, uh, I'm going to leave my lands untapped. Okay, come on, Cradle. Visionary, that's tough. Okay, uh, here's this. Visionary, draw me a cradle. Did draw a land. I'll take it. And fetching to seven might be dangerous. So I think I'll get away with it. Is there... Creatures are fives, and I only want to block one of them. Like, if they just play two artifacts, they're both lethal, when, like, it would be really hard to play three artifacts. But two is in the realm of possibility. They have to do the tap shit now. And I can easily natural order next turn. I have lots of material available. My opponent said they are 15 and 1 with this deck over their last four FNMs. Hell yeah. I'm glad someone out there is taking the, the fine word of the Tangle Wire. Okay, so they tapped their wire and the creatures. They determined that beatdown is not the, the route to victory here. Karn. That's scary. Do they have something like Grafdigger's Cage in the sideboard? Are they just going to get me that way? Because I have an almost lethal attack on board. They said expletive miscounted in the chat. Uh, were they going for ensnaring bridge here? I think I'm... Am I just ice cold to bridge in the main deck? They're making their wish with Garn. How do I beat bridge in the main? I actually just don't, it seems. Grist destroys creatures or planeswalkers. I guess the Grist ultimate can kill them. So that would have been become the plan immediately. Walking Ballista. Okay, so they can Ballista for X is 1. That's not going to be that great, because I can pick up whatever they were going to shoot. All right, not that way. All right, well, that just dies. Okay. Did I have a line there to do something in response? I don't think so. All right. I have to tap three permanents now. Let me go Bajuka Bog. Land, land, okay, draw. If I just go one, two, three mana for natural order, then hoof is, hoof math is so hard. I've played a lot of elves and I still suck at hoof math. I'll have five creatures, I'll have four creatures because I have to suck one to the order. I have four creatures. Can I get more elves into play this turn? Can I get six elves into play? Uh. One, two, three, four. 
Shepherd costs one. Then I can tap Shepherd, one, two, three mana. I can buff this turn. Okay. I think we're good here. I get to go three here. Visionary. One mana floating. Pick that up. Use my one mana floating or Allosaurus Shepherd. And <laughs> did I just fuck this up after all my counting? Uh, if I go cast Wirewood Symbiote. Yeah, I think I fucked up after all my counting. Um, it's fine. I'll make it work. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I thought I could get Symbiote. I, my, in my head, I could get Symbiote into play and still tap my three elves, but I'm actually a land short of doing all that. I can huff right now to kill Karn. If I play Symbiote, I can pick up a tapped elf, to untap an elf, and I have three mana. A hoof only gets in for 11, and I am dead to Lattice if I left them untap with Karn, so I do have to clear Karn this turn. Yeah, I miscounted this real well. Could get Archon a name artifact. That locks out anything I'd be worried about Karn doing. It does lock out a lot of their deck, actually. Yeah, I guess I'll just do that. Natural order here. Wait, am I just dead to the constructs if I do that? No, they're five fives. Oh, but they can animate Tangle Wire and attack with it, which is lethal. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Damn it. I have messed up this game left and right all over the place. All right, I'll get Archon and hope they don't see it. I should have just hoofed in the beginning. If they tap Tangle Wire to Tangle Wire, though, then they can't attack with Tangle Wire. And that is the obvious line, so let's hope they're not on Galaxy Brain level. Good, good, good. They tap Tangle Wire to Tangle Wire. That means it can't attack me. And they can't deploy more artifacts to get their constructs bigger. If they have an artifact to land, or is it cast? Players can't cast spells. Yeah, if they have an artifact land, I actually lose on the spot. Including in the graveyard. Or in the sideboard. Okay, they plused Karn with no target. Good. They actually had lethal there, and it was a pretty convoluted line, but they did have it. I handed it over. I handed it back. Okay, Tangle Wire. You're not going to get me this time. I tap two things. How about Bajuka Bug and Forest? Glimpse of Nature doesn't matter. I can attack with my Archon. Also, just try to glimpse out. Yeah, I'll tr just try to glimpse out for a little bit. Glimpse, Symbiote, Heritage Druid, one, two, three, Symbiote, untap, Heritage Druid by picking up Visionary, Visionary, draw two, there's the Cradle, okay, we're doing it fam, and there's the Hoof, alright, <laughs> I did my best to throw this in the trash, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I'll tap three elves, make another elf, and that gets me the mana and requisite creature count to hoof. I could even zenith first now that I drew natural order. Do I need to do that? No, but it's fun. Get another symbiote. There's symbiote, and then cradle. Tap for nine. I'm gonna zenith for hoof. I could Natural Order, but Zenith does the trick as well. And I get to keep all my precious creatures. Alright, it's late at night. Cut me some slack. I'm recording this pretty much at my bedtime. So I navigated that. Took a little extra work, but we got there. Counting to four is really hard. I'm going to try to go fast in this matchup. Urza Echo is on Newton's sideboard guide, but that's not really what we're playing against. We're playing against Urza Prison, which is a materially different thing. But I still think going fast is the solution. Force of Vigor is very good. Visionary and Symbiote, the best friends club, might be a little too slow. Endurance and Grist don't have a whole lot of text here. And destroying Karn could be relevant, but... I think I just want to go fast. Destroy permanence kind of selectively. Oh, I should have cut Pajuka Bog for Wasteland against this version of the deck, but I already clicked Submit. If there's a Game 3, I'll make that change. I'm going to keep this. It has a removal spell. 
and crop rotation. Crop rotation is a bonus cradle when you're just trying to run to the finish line. And crop rotation does not put the land into play on play tapped like Reclaimer does. There's Emery. So Bog does have some text. They milled three lands in Karn. We take those. Here's Reclaimer. I'm representing Bajuka Bog now. They do have the Lotus Petal. If they don't find anything better for Emery, they could just tap Emery for mana, basically, by replaying Petal. That's four mana. Turn two. Five mana, really, if they want it. Yikes. <laughs> Speaking of going fast, there's Urza. And now that Lotus Petal is a Mock Sapphire. God, there's more. This Chalice of the Void to finish off the turn. Yikes. Disrespectful. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to spend a turn now removing Chalice. Allosaurus Shepherd ignores Chalice, but you do have to have that card, it turns out. They can activate Urza once. Oh, they can also cast Karn right now. There's that. <laughs> this has been an explosive draw from the opponent. That's what I get for registering non-blue. The opponent just gets to have their way with the game. What artifact are they getting? They have two mana to operate with right now. They could get the the coating, which would just function as Rashad and Port, which would actually be enough to beat me. Maybe it's not, though, because if they go for the Rashad and Port effect, I can rotate that land into Cradle, which is not the point of the turn where I want to do that, but it's not the worst thing that could ever happen either. Winter Orb. Okay. Deal. They're going for the hooks. The meme hooks. Um, that's still really bad for me. Saying. Okay, can I get through Winter Orb? I have to go after the Chalice. There is no choice in that matter. This game's not happening without with Chalice in play. I have a chance to draw a land and do more stuff, though. I did draw land. What is the plan? I can go virtual arrangers, then I can crop rotate into cradle. I can play heritage druid, then all right, I'm gonna have to play heritage druid. Tap my creatures, play elvish visionary. Hope that I draw something good. Here's the visionary. If I draw a good spell here, the crop rotation can keep the party going. Oh, okay, that's not bad. Um, yeah, crop rotation into cradle is cradle, and then I can play heritage druid and then tap two elves for black, which can kill Karn. Karn is the thing that's literally threatening to end the game right now. Urza is scary, Emery scary, sure, all those things are scary, but only one of them is literally just like suspend one, the game is over. They get to float mana with Winter Orb in the end step, which means they get to untap all their lands. But I do have a board full of elves and Gaia's Cradle, so Winter Orb's not that bad for me. Oh right, they could just replay the Chalice, that's a thing. Gonna have to work through that too. Allosaur Shepherd off the top. Tangle Wire, yikes. Life is pain. I'm gonna dive very quickly to these Construct Beats. Okay, I'm gonna untap Cradle as my land for turn. And Tangle Wire, I guess I have to let it tap Elves across the board for Elves. Uh, okay, I can cast that. Face down, Morph Creature. What's up, Chalice of the Void? And do I want to rotate a land into a different land? No, I don't think that I do. Uh, though with this floating mana, I might as well turn this face up. I might want to use that mana. And this is more helpful as an Elf in play anyway. All right, moment of truth. Do I get another turn? And if so, can I do anything with it? Kind of hoping they just start flipping with Urza, because if they cast spells from their hand, that means they have good spells in their hand and they don't need to flip with Urza. That is a reasonable spell. They can only flip with Urza if they want to tap their construct, I think, if I counted right. Okay, they're drawing cards with Psy. Cool. Cashing them in. Not cool. Found a zero mana artifact to play. Right, and the, that turns on Emery. This deck is so good. Who built it? I am not going to block. One's the same as, as 10 at this point. I'm going to draw natural order or I'm going to lose, and that's like the whole game. 
Untap Cradle, Tangle Wire, and Tap Three Elves. Okay, natural order. Saying there's a chance. I'm going to tap my elves first before my cradle. Come on, let's cradle. Let's find something. Ooh, Zenith. Is that good enough? I have eight mana. What is there to Zenith for in this deck? Grist is not in the deck. I'm one short of getting hoof. Oh, I can get a... Uh... I think I just have to get Symbiote and hope to refire. Symbiote, untap this elf by bouncing this elf. This gives me three elves for the Heritage Druid. Come on, natural order. Force of Vigor. You don't say. Where do I point this? Um, unfortunately, they have two flyers. That I guess I just have to kill those. Yeah, get rid of those. They can draw a card off of Psy with that, but I'm not imminently dead to it, which is an improvement from my current situation. Okay, pass the turn. They have four attackers, I have four blockers. They sack the Tangle Wire. That's scary. So they're trying to retangle me next turn. I do not have the mana to rotate into Bajuka Bog and make the blocks I need to make to stay alive, so I'm going to have to let them tangle. Here comes the combat. Okay. Block, block, and block. Blocks are required. Oh, and I can crop rotate now. Oh, no, I can't. Yes, I can. Nope. No, I can't. Okay. I can float mana now, but I can't. Oh, wait. No, I, I can do both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. One, two, three. Float mana. Untap Reclaimer by bouncing Visionary. And then rotate Bajuka Bog into play. All right. Yeah, I almost missed that. I was pretty sure it was there. <laughs> Couldn't find it for a second. Bajuka Bog. Itcha. Keep that Tangle Wire out of play. And I'm at one. Oh my god, stop! All right, Tangle Wire is back. I'm living in a world of shit. Hoof, Hoof still does it. If I can natural order, I still get him. Stacking Opal to Psy again. Or they sacked Chalice to Psy. Oh, if they replay it on two, then I can't Visionary. Oh, there's a cage in this deck too. Fuck. That was a good find. All right. And they have plenty of mana to replay Chalice on two. All right, they're stepping up the game over there, starting to make tight decisions. I'm not convinced that I have an out at this point. Oh, they're just not even playing the chalice. They're just second tangling. Okay, I don't have that many permanents. Now I'm dead. That'll do. All right, game three. The visionary stuff wasn't bad. Uh, yeah, I did want Wasteland in the deck. The Juka Bog was okay there, but I think Wasteland against this Saga deck and this Mana Hungry deck in general is probably just a better thing to have. And a land that comes into play untapped against Winter Orb sounds pretty good too. I can see game. I can imagine game states where Grist is just insane. It just generates an extra permanent every turn. So that's like something that can get tangled up that I don't mind so much. It also kills Karn. I think I do want Grist in the game. Noteworthy though. Graft Digger's Cage stops Grist. Containment Priest doesn't. Containment Priest lets the permanent arrive and then asks the game if it's a creature. Cage doesn't let it arrive at all, so the game doesn't get a chance to see Grist as anything other than a creature. So if they have Cage, that's bad for Grist. But I do see worlds where it could be pretty good. Now let's do this. Really just a quick Archon is the key to victory here, I think. On the play. I can keep this, and I think I want to Zenith for Arbor, or no, I want to Ranger, Ranger Danger, and set up, like Zenith for Oof is something that's more powerful in this matchup, and I want to play my ones before I'm necessarily, like, locked to Chalice. All right, now I'm never locked to Chalice. Fuck Chalice. How hard can I go here? If I wait a turn on Glimpse, I can get several creatures in. If I wait a turn on Glimpse, though, I might be under Tangle Wire. I'm going to get 
a basic cast Elvish Vish. And all right, I'll cast Reclaimer here. I want to hold on to the Shepherd until they commit to a Chalice. But maybe I'm supposed to get this Zenith in before they cage me. I don't know. The Beatdowns are going to come pretty quick starting next turn. Four mana. Just Karn. There it is. Here's Karn. Luckily, this Opal's not on, so they can't just grab Graph Digger's Cage right now. If they don't grab something that interacts with the board, I can just attack Karn to death. Engineered Explosives does interact with the board. However, I can Zenith for two, get the Oof, and then kill Karn in combat. There he is, the mischievous Oof. And attack Karn, Karn, Karn. It died in Karn Bat. <laughs> kind of hoping they do have Chalice of the Void, because it's the dead card that I get to laugh at. What I don't want is prison elements like Tangle Wire and Winter Orb. Right, there's the explosives that can't explode right now. They're just investing in the future. Bold to assume you have one. Ah, 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 ah. That was a great draw. Glimpse of nature. Let's get to work. Shep. Looking for Cradle here. As usual. Heritage Druid. Draw. I found Cradle. That's so nice. Activate Shepherd. And I count 16. Well, I count 17, but they're at 16. They have something waiting for me here. Can they, like, dismember the oof and then pop explosives? That's pretty harsh. It's going to cost a lot of life to do that. Oh, that's exactly what they have. Sick. They got me real good. They're still going to three life here uh, with just Ancient Tomb for mana. All right, that was a sick line, but they are in trouble. This game's far from over. Yeah, just passing the turn. Oh, that's sick. I'm going to play Windswept Teeth, not the Arbor from hand, because I want the Arbor to be a surprise. Now they can officially not tap the tombs. Most things they could do that I'd care about, I can force a Vigor. And if I fetch for my homie here, that's lethal. Bang. And in for two. Here we go. That was weird and scrappy, but we have connected the 4-1. We got the GGs in the chat. There we go. 4 and 1. A respectable finish with Hello Newton, Oops All Cradles, Black Green Rock Elves, whatever you want to call this. Losing to Delver, which... I mean, that's the best deck in the format. I've been told that that matchup is favorable. I am I can certainly see how it would line up that way. We did a pretty good job keeping Murktide out of play. My opponent just drew, what, like five or six red spells in game two and blocked me out that way and backed it up with Wastelands and stuff. Like, you're not going to win games like that. You do need material on the board, whether it's lands, elves, or ideally both to win games with this deck. But we could see how it could happen. It just didn't happen for us, this league. But everyone else fell to our mighty Elven Blades. We got some really cool plays. Getting to, like, Endurance Crater Hoof back into my deck to then Zenith for it. That was a highlight. The one of Endurance in the main deck came up a couple times. That was really good. We got to Archon of Valor's reach someone. We got to Hoof someone. Grist came up once. Collector Oof came up once. We used every part of the buffalo, as they say, and I think this deck's really great. I'm sure there's some macro level stuff that, as a more traditional Nettle Sentinel Elves player, I wasn't really understanding. Like, there were multiple games where I had Reclaimer on one and then, like, played out an Elf on turn two, and maybe you're just always supposed to tutor up Cradle. Is that how this uh, list is supposed to be played? Like, literally always just get turn two Cradle. If that is the case, then I've totally missed the boat on that, and I'm sure I'm losing percentage points for it. But I made plays that made sense to me, and we did come up with a 4-in-1. So, thank you all for watching. Akratos, thank you for asking me to play this. This is a fun deck that I like to have on the channel from time to time, and it also happens to be really good right now. Make sure to check out Hello Newton's Patreon and Twitch streams if you are interested in this deck. He is the expert, and he will answer your questions for you better than I can. And while you're here, like, comment, and subscribe the video and the channel. Check out my Patreon. I have that too, if you're in the generous mood. 
there's boss and roll merch all that stuff is available in the video description below thanks for watching and i'll see you next time